Hey guys, and welcome back to my Let's Play of LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. Since we finished up challenge mode last time, there is just one more thing left to do, and that is the Bounty Hunter missions. First off, this is the outside area of the hub world. I'll go into a little bit more into this uh, in the final part. Though really, it's tiny compared to the uh, previous games, especially three, but I get a car. That's what's important. I get a car. So in order to get to the Bounty Hunter missions, you need to have every Bounty Hunter from the original trilogy unlocked. So that's Boba Fett, Greedo, 4 LO. Hang on a second. Mission 1, Qui-Gon Jinn. The vile gangster Jabba the Hutt plans to kidnap leading figures across the galaxy and hold them for ransom. A band of vicious Bounty Hunters has come together to execute Jabba's scheme. Their first target, the Jedi Qui-Gon Jinn, currently engaged on a secret mission above the planet Naboo. So you need to have all of these guys unlocked. So there's Boba Fett, Greedo, IG-88, 4LOM or 4LOM, whatever his name is pronounced as, Bosk, and Denger, Denger, whatever his name is pronounced as. Basically, it's all of the bounty hunters that very briefly appear and don't do anything in Empire Strikes Back. And Boba Fett. So yeah, all of the all of the bounty hunters that briefly appear and don't do anything. And then all you have to do is just go up to the character and basically just go up and touch him. That's all you got to do. Once you hit them, as in you don't need to physically slap them, but once you get to them, uh, the mission just ends. You get a little bit of you get a little bit of money for the amount of time you have left, and gold bricks. We haven't seen these since free play mode. I don't understand why Challenge Mode didn't have any gold bricks. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they thought that whatever number it would be, like 196, would be a bit weird. But surely they could come up with four more cold bricks. Just have them. Just have you buy more in the shop. I'm sure you buy like 16. So there you go. Perfect. But anyway, mission two: Queen Amidala. Yeah, we're not getting her as Pat. Maybe get her as the Queen. Some of these uh, paragraphs are the same, others are different, like this. Now the royal leader of Naboo has become a target of the Hutt's evil ambition. A band of vicious bounty hunters has come together to execute Jabba's scheme and capture Queen Amidala. The thing is though, is these were introduced in LEGO Star Wars 2. And I wanted to see if I can make the shortcut, but I sort of messed it up right here. I mean, I, I still get up there, but it didn't really... I still wasted time anyway. Not as much compared to climbing all the way up here, but still. These were introduced in LEGO Star Wars 2. And I guess they decided, well, we've got the prequels here now, so we may as well include them as part of the game. The thing is, they didn't really put in a lot of effort for this. So LEGO Star Wars 2's Bounty Hunter missions are much longer. You have to go way further into the levels to find the characters. They're still pretty short. You can find most of them in under two minutes. Some of them are really easy to find. But compared to these, they, they are much better. Needless to say, the next part is considerably longer than this part. But some of these, there's just no effort whatsoever. You literally just hold left or hold right. There they are. Right, mission three, Jar Jar Binks. And I love this opening crawl so much. For once though, Jabba's information is falsy. On the planet Naboo, he has sent his bounty hunters to find and capture the utterly inconsequential Gungan Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, this is set, this is apparently, Qui Gon Jinn's here, so I guess that's why. It's supposed to be set in the episode one time so, he's not a representative yet? Maybe? I don't know. And I don't know why I started running in the opposite direction. He's right there. Come on past me. Don't know why you started running in that direction. The bounty hunters are pretty much just hand solo. Well, it depends on the bounty hunter, but most of them are just hand solo with a thermal detonator. They got that dive maneuver that you can follow up with a, a rapid triple blast. And that's about it. IG-88 can't really do anything. He's, he's got a similar destination. He's got a gun. So he can grapple. 
and he has a single jump. But because he's a droid, he can't build. He can't really interact with very much. Forlom, or however you pronounce his name, is better because he can use both protocol and astromech panels. But again, he can't build for some reason. Mission four, Mace Windu. Yeah, this beginning bit is pretty much exactly the same every single time. Even the noble Jedi have become targets of the Hut's evil ambition. A band of vicious bounty hunters have come together to execute Jabba's scheme. Their next target, Mace Windu, currently on Geonosis. Uh, so Bosk and Den Bosk, Dengar and Greedo are pretty much just like, again they're the hand solo. See, this is all this is all IG88 can do. You can do a single jump, fire that blaster, and throw thermal detonators, which are many, which are like three times his width. And then for Alarm, it's probably the second most useful really because he can activate droid panels. I use Boba Fett. Compared to the films, this version of Boba Fett is much better. Because he actually has a use. Because he has a jetpack. And his gun does double damage. Even though Forlorn has the exact same looking gun. I don't think it does double damage. And for some reason he likes to hit himself in the head. I don't know why. And, if, and his face looks like he's uh, poking his tongue out all the time. You know. He's a droid. And I'm pretty sure he's the droid that we see inside the Jawa Sandcrawler in the first film. So I don't know what it's doing there. I, mean, I don't know what happens if you activate any of the other astromech panels. I assume you can no longer get to Mace Windu, so don't. Just activate the first one. And that one is probably the one that had the most effort put into it, which is sad, really. Well, actually, I'd say the Rebel Trooper. He had the most effort put into it. This one, on the other hand, Mission 5, Kit Fisto. Now, there was an edit there, I will admit, but that's only because I accidentally skipped this text, which I wanted to read out loud, even though mostly I'm not, apart from the very end part of it. A band of vicious bounty hunters has come together to execute Jabba's scheme. Their next target, Kit Fisto, currently on Kamino. So I did practice all of these before I went over to it, before I recorded it, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's literally all you have to do. Like I said, where is the effort? There isn't any. Could have easily have had him where you get to that bridge section. You could have been at the top because there's like a, an upper an upper area. You could have had a, you could have gone across the bridge into the area where those robots come out of those things that you need R4 to shut. And there's like a dark side wall, dark side door that only a Sith can get through. Well, okay, bit of a problem there. You need a Sith to get through. No, these guys are Sith. Okay. Still, it could have been a bit more than that. So you know when you're... Okay, well, before I get into that, I thought that was bad. I'd say this one is even worse. It's hard to say. <laughs> Mission 6, Luminara. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So you had hold left to win. At least you had to use Boba Fett's jetpack. You had to use Boba Fett to get to that. You, know, you can use absolutely anybody for this one. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The next target, Luminara Unduli in the Geonosian Battle Arena. So, hold left, hold right, <laughs> go over to this bouncy under panel, open the gates, and there you go. I went a bit further out into the level there, you can easily do that in under 10 seconds. What was that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Pointless, that's what it was, it was a waste of time. <laughs> That was appropriate if it were, if that was in Lego Star Wars 3, it'd be much more appropriate, but like the Clone Wars when they're on Geonosis, but and Luminara is there, but no, she's, I mean, she is on Geonosis during the battle arena, but somehow she got captured this time. So you have the, the little character icon, it's not exactly little, but that appears in the uh, in the screen as you start to get closer. If you're too far away, it won't show up, it will then slowly fade in. And then it will become very clear the closer you are. Which is how you know the Luminara and Kit Fisto are right next to you, pretty much. Mission 7, Ki Adimundi. They have some really weird names. Their next target, Ki Adimundi, commanding a Republic attack cruiser. Yes, a Republic attack cruiser. Let's have a look at this Re Republic attack cruiser. Oh, it's Grievous's ship from Revenge of the Sith. I'm pretty sure this is a Separatist attack cruiser. 
Wait, this is, why is it say Republic? This is Grievous' ship. We had to res we had to get onto this thing to rescue the Chancellor Palpatine. So how do you how do you get that mixed up? For starters, it's full of battle droids. Which just pop in in this level. Yeah, there's a few of these, rather than simply like falling from the sky, the battle droids just pop in and so will the clone troopers. When we get to them, which I think is the next one. That you actually had to go into a different screen to go after Kiari Mundi. That one's probably got the most effort put into it out of all of them. But technically, Jar Jar thinks she had to as well, but still. All you had to do in that was just blow up the tank. I guess you could spend a bit of time looking for Queen Amidala if you don't know where she is. When you do know where she is, it's really easy. I mean, that's the case with all of them, really, but you still have to actually get to places in LEGO Star Wars 2's Bounty Hunter missions. And now randomly, we're going forwards in time a bit. Mission 8, a rebel trooper. The vile gangster Jabba the Hutt has commissioned a band of vicious bounty hunters to kidnap members of the Rebel Alliance. The greedy mercenaries know no limits to their pursuit of bounty. On the planet Kashyyyk, they will even pursue a lone rebel trooper far away from home. Yeah, this guy's just here, and this, okay, this is the one where they have to put in the most effort for, for these uh, missions. You should actually have to go some distance into the level. It's not much, and you can see these clone troopers just appear out of nowhere, just like that. But they, it's not exactly much, but this is easily the one where you have to travel the furthest. And by shooting these things, you can lower the bridge. I wonder if that works in free play mode. I've never tried it. If free play or uh, challenge mode, you can actually do that. I don't see why not. Otherwise, the level's exactly the same. Well, I guess not, because they have infinitely respawning enemies. Surely they could have come up with another prequel character. I mean, these guys just... The Rebels sort of just appear out of nowhere at the end of Revenge of the Sith. So I don't know if they're all from Alderaan. He doesn't seem remotely bothered that, ba that Boba Fett has come to get him, but... Anyway. You think it would... No, I... I can't even remember if Captain Antilius is one you have to go after in the original trilogy. But really, I'm sure, surely there is somebody that they, yeah. I mean, we have we have two new Jedi in this game. It could have been Plo Koon. It could have been Ayla Secura. Be a bit weird that they're on Kashyyyk when at the exact same time they're on other planets. But it just seems to make the most sense to me. Mission nine, Shakti. For some reason, it's written as one word there, from the looks of it. So this is a, this one, not so much effort. A band of vicious bounty hunters has come together to execute Java's scheme. Their next target, Shakti, in the Jedi Temple. Now the word they've used there is in the Jedi Temple. The real word they should have used is on the Jedi Temple, because we can see her up there. Do you have stuff in the corner? I think they should have put her in the uh, Jedi Council room. It just, see, it just seems like that would be the most appropriate place to have her. And there we go. Already she's had more screen time than she ever did in the films. And I'm probably including that deleted scene from Revenge of the Sith. I swear she's had like three different ways of dying. Though one of them may be because of this game. So slightly different. <laughs> I mean, she has a role in an episode of The Clone Wars. But she's only there for like a few minutes to provide the words of wisdom. The episode is about clone troopers. Because it's like a prequel to the Rookies episode. Which is weirdly then followed by a sequel to the Rookies episode. Even though that was the fifth episode of season one. These were the first and second episodes of season three. I hate The Clone Wars continuity. <laughs> it goes back and forth and back and forth between time. Characters are dead or are no longer dead. I hate it. Mission 10, Commander Cody. Alright, this is our last one for this part, our last prequel one. On the planet Utapau, Commander Cody's high status in the, Rebel, in the Republic military will make him a valuable prize. So he's still a good guy at this point, I take it. See, that's how they should be appearing. I mean, granted, you still don't know where those come from, and that platform is brand new. That is not there in the, in the General Grievous level. So they do make some slight alterations. 
Just get him in the back with the rocket. The jetpack, that's what I'm trying to say. Hey, brother. <laughs> it's like they are one and the same, you know. Commander Cody is a clone of Django Fett, as it is Boba Fett. So they are, they are one and the same. It's a bit of a continuity issue with all of this. It's like, how are all of these characters are from the original trilogy? So they're like 20 years later. I mean, we never see Commander Cody die. He lives. But I imagine, like, the rapid aging thing is supposed to make them get older? That's what they do in, like, uh, Star Wars Rebels, I think. I think that's... Is that why I'm Mr. Captain Rex? Anyway, next up, the original trilogy. So I will see you guys then.